All right, excellent, amazing. It seems that we are live and it is working, hopefully, hopefully. Amazing, great. Okay, uh, welcome everyone to Space Chat. Uh, again, things are changing, lots of moving around. For those of you that have watched Space Chat before, but thank you for bearing with us. Uh, as usual, I'm going to give everyone a minute or two to log on and get ready uh, so that we give everyone a chance to learn about what's going on in space. Uh, for those of you that are already here, uh, let me know if you watched the Virgin Galactic launch last Sunday, uh, if you've been keeping up with all of that craziness, which of course we will be talking about today. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's very, very exciting. Um, amazing. All right, so again, gonna give everyone a minute or two, but it seems that things are rolling. Excellent, 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 great. Okay, gonna give everyone just about 30 more seconds um, to come on and then I'm going to be starting Space Chat officially. Um, thank you to those of you who've logged on early. Uh, I appreciate your diligence with the time. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so I'm just gonna dive right into things now. Hello and welcome to Space Chat. This past week, Virgin Galactic successfully blasted off to space and landed back on Earth. Blue Origins gearing up to do the same in just a few days. Hubble successfully switched back on and a whole lot of crazy space science has been going on. Hi, I'm Chelsea and welcome to Space Chat. If you've been here before, it might seem a little bit different, um, but whether or not you've been here before or you are brand new, Space Chat is the weekly show where I chat about the universe and answer your questions. So without further ado, let's talk about what's been going on in space. So this past Sunday, as I mentioned, um, and some of you have actually maybe saw me here on Facebook Live, actually from the launch site, uh, Virgin Galactic successfully launched and landed its Unity 22 crewed suborbital space flight. The space flight saw Virgin Galactic CEO Richard Branson fly to and from space alongside his crewmates, uh, mission specialists Sarisha Bandla, uh, Beth Moses, and Colin Bennett. Now the crew flew up above an altitude of 50 miles or 80 kilometers above Earth's surface. Um, and they did this on the company's Unity space plane. Uh, four others also participated in the mission, uh, two pilots for the Unity space plane and two pilots for VMS Eve, the mothership that takes the space plane up to about 50,000 feet before they detach and the space plane continues on for space. But just as the dust started to settle on Virgin Galactic's mission and successful launch, the countdown began for Blue Origin's upcoming suborbital flight to space with its new Shepard vehicle. Now, Blue Origin's launch is set for this upcoming Tuesday, and we'll see the crew go over the Carmen Line, um, which is a different boundary of space, um, which lies about 62 miles or 100 kilometers above Earth's surface. Now, there was a major reveal just this week about the crew for this mission. So up until this week, we knew that Blue Origin and Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, along with his brother Mark, planned to fly on this first inaugural flight. Um, additionally, it was recently announced that pioneering aviator Wally Funk, who was one of the Mercury 13, back in the earliest days of space flight, uh, when NASA was just getting its Mercury astronauts together, she will also be on the flight and at 82 years old will be the oldest person to ever travel to space. But this week, the fourth and final crew member for this mission was announced. Uh, now, <laughs> everyone has been kind of anticipating this fourth crew member because that seat was actually purchased at a Blue Origin auction for 28 million dollars. Um, that money went to Blue Origin's nonprofit Club for the Future, which so far has sent one million dollars to each to 19 different space nonprofits. Um, however, while the bidder paid 28 million dollars, they had a scheduling conflict. I know, I know, it's totally crazy. Imagine 28 million dollars you're going to space first flight and you have a scheduling conflict i can't imagine what that conflict might be um but it means that they will not be flying on this mission and will instead fly 
uh, on a future mission. But in their place, the fourth crew member will be an 18-year-old recent high school graduate named Oliver Damon. Uh, Damon was actually going to fly on the next Blue Origin flight um, as his father actually purchased that seat for him in the auction. Um, Blue Origin is not saying how much uh, Damon paid for the seat uh, or the name of the anonymous donor of the $28 million. Um, and now Damon's father did pay for the seat. He is the founder and CEO of an investment firm in the Netherlands where they are both from. But with Damon on board, this flight will now carry Wally Funk as the oldest person to ever fly to space at 82 and Oliver Damon at 18, who will be the youngest person to ever fly to space. Um, so we will have to see how this flight goes with this quite eclectic crew in their short journey up to space and back down to Earth. Now, if you're sick of hearing about all these billionaire space flights, I get it. Um, and there's been a lot of other amazing and interesting things happening in space as well. Now, one crazy space happening is that the moon's wobble, scientists think, coupled with climate change, could cause record flooding over the next decade. That's right. It sounds crazy, but it really is true. Uh, scientists are predicting a wobble in the moon's orbit. Um, now, this wobble isn't itself isn't something to be concerned with. It's something that they've expected, um, and it takes 18.6 years to complete. However, the wobble and, you know, how lunar tides, uh, you know, the moon really does influence tides on Earth. Uh, so this wobble, coupled with rising sea levels due to climate change, will cause flooding to escalate to an extreme. Uh, in fact, in a new study, scientists estimate uh, flood rates to be multiplied by three or four times by the 2030s, um, with floods also getting more severe um, and more extreme with these rising sea levels. So uh, this is definitely something to be concerned about. Uh, you know, we can't really do anything about the moon, but there are still things we can do about climate change. Now, additionally, there is what some have referred to as an alien burp that was detected by NASA's Curiosity rover on Mars. Curiosity detected methane on the planet, uh, and that is not the first time it's happened, but it is notable as methane is most often produced by microscopic life. It could be produced, uh, you know, abiotically or without life involved at all, but the study of methane on Mars is of interest to scientists because they think it's possible that at some point in time it could have been produced by life. Um, and they think that this alien burp that some are referring to it as, uh, that the methane that was detected could have actually been released recently. Um, so whatever the cause or the however this methane was created, it's very, very interesting and I'm curious to know the source. Um, additionally, astronauts on the International Space Station have been growing spicy chili peppers, uh, which is interesting. Uh, among the many, many uh, plant and vegetable and food growing experiments that continue on the space station and have for years. Um, additionally, China's Mars rover Zerong located its parachute and its back shell that helped it to land on the planet. Uh, researchers are also exploring the idea of using artificial intelligence to spot gravitational waves. And lastly, scientists are actually studying what they call cosmic fireworks in nearby galaxies to learn more about how stars form. So that's a little taste of what's been new in space this week. It's been a busy week in space. Um, but now we get to my favorite part of space chat, the part where we chat. So if you have not yet the, gotten the chance to ask me a question, if you have any question about anything I've discussed, anything happening in space or anything space related in general, pop it down into the comments below. And without further ado, I'm gonna start going through your questions. I'm gonna hydrate a little first though, because I see a lot of really good ones. Okay, let's see. Okay. Glenn, all that money could feed a lot of people. You are right. Uh, I have not, I don't know exactly what nonprofits that money has gone to yet, but I do know that all of that money is going to charity. Uh, so we'll see how exactly it's used, but yes, all of that money could do quite a bit of good. All right, Brian asked, here's a crazy question for you. Would Sir Richard Branson be the first person with a knighthood to go to space? That's interesting. Um, 
I would have to fact check that one. I do not know. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Richard Branson is also Sir Richard Branson. Uh, and so, and he did fly to space and back successfully uh, last Sunday, July 11th. So I will, I will look that up uh, later today and I will try to confirm for you because that would be really interesting if he was the first person with a knighthood to ever fly to space and back. I'm sure he would be thrilled with the title. All right. All right. Not sure what Benjamin's question means. Ah, Paul asks an interesting question. Was he really in space or just at the edge of it? So if you've been following this billionaire space race, I know it's everyone has very mixed opinions on it, um, but you may have seen the discourse around the kind of what is the boundary of space? Did Richard Branson go to space? Did he almost get to space? Did that mission really get there? Um, so the answer is a little bit gray. But yes, by some standards, that crew definitely went to space and back. So the boundary of space, you know, it's not like crossing state lines. There's no big sign that says, hey, welcome to space uh, as you exit our atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's really up to interpretation. And so there are different definitions of what it means to be in space. So there's something called the Kármán line, which is 62 miles or 100 kilometers above Earth's surface. And many people defer to that as once you cross that, you're in space. Um, and Blue Origin's flight will cross that line. Um, however, that you don't have to go that high in order to earn astronaut wings and the title of astronaut with the FAA, the US military, and with NASA. Um, and so the Virgin Galactic flight just flew above 50 miles uh, or about 80 kilometers above Earth's surface. And while it does not cross the Kármán line, they still flew very high. They flew high enough um, to experience microgravity and to earn their astronaut wings um, in accordance with the FAA, the US military, et cetera. So, you know, while they're not going to the exact same altitude, and I'm sure there's some billionaire rivalry going on there, uh, they, they are both going to space, one has been, one is about to go. Uh, it's just a little bit different. So to, to answer your question in kind of a roundabout way, went to space. Okay, Pompey, can I join the team? I'm not sure what team you wanna join, but maybe. <laughs> if, you mean the, if you mean the crew for any of these space flights, they seem pretty booked up, but uh, the hope is that this is just the start. I mean, these are the first crewed suborbital flights um, that of their of their kind for these companies. And so everyone has their fingers crossed that this means that in the future, more and more people will be able to be on flights like this, will be able to travel and see the earth from space and experience this unbelievable journey. Uh, my fingers are crossed. I would love to do it as well. All right, Diana <laughs> asks, do Branson and Bezos have plans for anything beyond low Earth orbit? Um, so that's a really great question. Um, even getting into orbit, they're not there yet. Uh, they're still, still suborbital. Uh, they haven't broken into orbit with any of these crewed missions, um, but they have plans aside from this. So Virgin Galactic, it does seem that their major goal right now is kind of working on and continuing to build on this suborbital space flight thing, right? Having people pay for tickets, um, having flying them up to space, flying them back safely. And so that seems to be their, their main priority right now. And Blue Origin is definitely focused on that as well. Um, Blue Origin was, uh, I believe, in the running to build a lander as part of NASA's Artemis program, which would take their technology to the moon. Um, however, SpaceX ended up winning out that contract. So I'm, I'm curious to see how they continue to grow and evolve. This is this seems to be the first of many steps that these companies will take in space. And whether they stay uh, just under our orbit or if they break into Earth's orbit or even beyond, uh, I think that would be really interesting to see. All right. All right, Elle asks, what would make the moon wobble? Um, nothing pushed it, nothing, there's no, there's no collision, there's no, uh, you know, asteroid that came and crashed into the moon is making it wobble. Um, it's just an expected and natural part of its orbit. Orbits aren't perfect. Um, even our orbit around the sun, we don't orbit the sun in a perfect circle. Uh, we orbit in an elliptical, um, just as the moon does with us. And, you know, Orbits aren't perfect, things wobble, things change. That's kind of the, the simple 
short answer to your question. All right. L also asks, should weightless be a correct definition for space? Um, that's not the definition for space by itself. Uh, in fact, you can go on a parabolic flight here on Earth and be weightless. I have done it. It was incredible. Um, and that by itself is not the definition for space. Um, the definition is really defined by the altitude. So some define it as over about 50 miles altitude and some 62. Um, but either way, those altitudes take you into space where you can see Earth and, Earth and the curvature of the Earth from space. Um, I think it might be a little bit difficult to tell too much of a difference between the two. David, by that definition, the ISS isn't in space. Um, it is. Yes, so these flights did not go high enough to even reach uh, low Earth orbit, um, but the ISS is in low Earth orbit, so it is much farther away from Earth um, than either of these uh, missions have been or will be. Oh, Mike Miller asks, the difference in top speed between Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. I don't know. Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, now, the Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic vehicles are very different. Uh, you've probably seen Virgin Galactic's, it looks like a plane because it's a space plane. Uh, meanwhile, Blue Origins looks a lot more like a rocket uh, with a spacecraft on top. So they look very different. Um, I'd imagine they don't have the same exact speed, but they both have to be going fast enough uh, <laughs> with the right momentum to get up to space. So, but that's interesting. I don't know the exact speed differential. All right, Ixer says, the space race is opening up more opportunities to go to space. That is the hope. Yes, that is the hope. Um, we will see again, this is really the tip of the iceberg. This is the beginning of more opportunities for more people to go to space, not just uh, the CEOs of the companies, not just billionaires. Um, and we'll see if that ends up happening. Uh, but my fingers are certainly crossed. All right, let's see. All right, Ixer also asks, is Richard Branson the first CEO of a rocket company to fly into space? It's a good question. Um, I don't believe so. Um, at the very least, I do believe that he is the first CEO of a rocket company to fly on his own rocket to space, um, which is pretty incredible and pretty interesting, I think. Uh, you know, But I guess if you're the CEO of the company, that's you just sh showing that you really believe in the product uh, enough to put your life on the line and, and rock it up to space. But that is an interesting question. Huh, interesting. OK, Tommy asks, during this trip, were they able to see the curvature of the Earth? Yes, um, they weren't, you know, it, it, they weren't super far away. It wasn't like the Earthrise photo from Apollo 8. They couldn't see the whole Earth in all its entirety. They weren't that far, um, but they were far enough to see Earth from space and see its curvature, um, which they described as, as just, just an incredible experience. Okay. Astro Center Wonderland. All right, Phil asks, any idea if you have to do special training before you go on these flights once it's cheaper for everyone? Like if someone wasn't that fit or if they were older? It's an interesting question. Um, so right now, especially Virgin Galactic, theirs was a test flight. So everyone on board, you know, trained specifically for this mission and it, they were testing it out. So they all had to be, you know, very fit just in case. However, part of the Virgin Galactic mission was also to test if their training prepared them for the flight. And so I think both companies are still in the process of developing what would training for a flight like this look like? Not for an experienced astronaut, but for a regular person. Um, will they have to put limits on age, on ability um, to keep things safe? Or with the proper training, would they be able to have this open to everybody? Um, these are still questions that, uh, that do not yet have answers. All right, Paul asks, can they use this to fly to the moon? Not yet. So the space plane is really just designed to go up over the boundary of space and back down to Earth. And New Shepard um, is designed for these suborbital flights as well. Now, whether or not some of that technology is repurposed for future flights uh, farther out into space or even as far as the moon or farther, um, that is yet to be seen. But the vehicles as they stand are just for these suborbital missions. All right. Well, thank you all so much for these incredible, incredible questions. This has been Space Chat. Join me again next week. And as always, stay tuned right here at space.com. And especially as we get closer to this Blue Origin launch on Tuesday, if you have any questions, if there's anything you're curious about and want to know the answer to, feel free to share it to space.com over social media. I'd love to hear it and I'd love to try to answer it.